welcome to the lecture in today's class we will discuss about euler's theorem now euler's theorem what is the statement if n is a positive integer and a and n are co primes then a of a raised to phi of n congruent to 1 mod n where phi of n is a euler's torsion function okay already you come to know what is torsion euler's torsion function now euler's theorem what it states for any positive integer n a and n are co prime to each other yes already i told you we have to consider n n as a positive integer and if a and n are co primes they are relatively prime means what their gcd should be 1 then a raised to phi n is congruent to 1 mod n this is what euler's theorem okay what is that is gcd of a comma n must be 1 they are relatively prime then what it implies if then a raised to phi n is always congruent to 1 mod n okay this is statement of euler's theorem okay now let us check one example okay so that euler's theorem holds true for a equal to 3 and n equal to 10 they are asking we have to show for a equal to 3 and n equal to 10 euler's theorem holds good okay now according to the euler's theorem statement first condition is what a and n should be co prime now 3 and 10 a is 3 and n is 10 so these are relatively prime yes or no so gcd of 3 and 10 is 1 okay. that property holds if this is true then you can write then according to theorem a raised to phi n is congruent to 1 mod n this is the euler statement then what is a here a is 10 uh, 3 okay phi of n phi of n is 10 congruent to 1 mod 10 okay we need to show this is true okay we need to show this is now already we have called uh, in the just i have sh shown you how to calculate the torsion function phi of 10 means what we need to find how many co primes are there for 10 those number is equal to torsion of 10 okay already i have shown you so for n less than 1 n minus 1 means torsion number is 10 so it is 1 to 9 numbers you will get okay then check the table then from that table you come to know phi of 10 there are there are four relatively prime numbers okay 1 and 10 gcd of 1 and 10 is 1 okay then gcd of 3 and 10 is 1 that are number then gcd of uh, 7 and 10 is 1 okay then another number is gcd of 9 and 10 is 1 okay there are four numbers okay that is in a easy to come calculate so phi of 10 is 4 once you get phi of 10 torsion number gotta ad mele in place of phi of 10 substitute 4 phi of 10 place alli now 3 raised to 4 aagbeku 3 raised to 4 is congruent to 1 mod 10 hoda id ad mele 3 raised to 4 eno what is 3 raised to 4 3 raised to 4 is 81 as 81 is congruent to 1 mod 10 whether it is true or not when you divide 81 what is the remainder you will get remainder as 1 only 10 8 is 80 so remainder is 1 only this implies what therefore what you can conclude you can say euler's theorem holds good for a equal to 3 and n equal to 10 this is how to check the euler's theorem okay now the using euler's theorem will solve some of the examples okay now problem is solve 3 raised to 2 not 2 mod 13 by euler's theorem using euler's theorem we need to find this okay solution given is 3 raised to 2 not 2 3 to the power 2 not 2 mod 13. Okay, we need to find this. 
now what is your n now n is 13 okay so here n is 13 13 is what 13 is a prime okay if 13 is a prime what will be phi of n for prime numbers already i have told you it is n minus 1 okay quotient number is n minus 1 so it is 12 so we use that now it is 12 use this 12 and divide your power power is what 202 means what we need to express this 202 in terms of this okay so 202 we are using what here we have used a property of quotient number then what you are using now we are using euclid's algorithm okay euclid's form then 12 into 1 so it is 12 8 82 12 into 6 72 then 10 is the remainder then how we are going to express this 202 202 is equal to 202 we are using it as writing it as 202 equal to 12 into 16 plus 10 okay this we are going to use there now express this this implies 3 to the power 202 can be expressed as 12 into 16 plus 10 okay mod 13 now again how you can write this 3 raised to 12 to the power 16 into 3 raised to 10 okay we split it up mod 13 okay now we have what is the property of euler's theorem by euler's theorem what is that euler's theorem statement you know euler's theorem any day and if a and n are primes okay co primes then a raised to phi n is congruent to 1 mod n. Alva, Iga a matta n. What is a? a is here a is 3 and n is 13. Okay. These two are relatively prime. They this it is 1. Alva, 3 comma 13 is 1. Then we can use this property. Anta. A no, a and re no 3. Okay. 3, phi of n and re no, phi of n no is what here phi of n is 12 okay here phi of n phi of 13 is 12 so 3 raised to 12 is congruent to 1 mod n and tartha alva 3 raised to 12 is congruent to 1 mod n and you know in place of 3 raised to 12 you can put 1 alva here a property nan use okay mod 13 is 3 raised to 12 and 1 so 1 raised to 16 into 3 raised to 10 mod 13 1 raised to 16 is 1 alva now 3 raised to 10 mod 13 okay now how you we can write 3 raised to 10 3 raised to 10 can be written as 3 raised to 3 into 3 raised to 3 into 3 raised to 3 into 3 raised to 1 mod 13 what is that? 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1. 3 plus 3, 6 plus 3, 9 plus 1. Understood? So, again, 3 raised to 3 is what? 9, uh, 27. Okay? If you want, we will show you here. One more thing. 3 raised to 3 is what? 3 square is 9. 9 into 3, 27. Okay? 27 is congruent to 1 mod 13. Yes or no? When you divide 27 by 13, 13 into 2, 26. So, remainder will be 1. Okay? In place of 3 raised to 3, you can write it as 1. So, it is 1, it is 1, it is 1 into 3 mod 13. So, what it implies? 3 mod 13. Therefore, this is the required solution. Solution of 3 raised to 202 mod 13 means the remainder when 13 uh, 3 raised to 202 is divided by 13, 
the remainder will be 3. This is how to use the Euler's theorem to solve the given examples. We will check one more example now. Now, solve 4 is to 99 mod 35 by Euler's theorem. Okay. Now, we will solve this using another property. So, given is 4 is to 99 mod 35. Okay. 35 is will keep it a higher number. Okay. Now, we will try to split it up in terms of two prime numbers. Okay. I want to find 5 of 35. Okay. 5 of 35, it can be written as 7 into 5. 35 can be written as 7 into 5. Means what? 7 and 5 are two prime numbers. Okay. Then you can write it as 5 of 7 into 5 of 5. What it means? Both are prime numbers. 35 na yaradu co primes na product ta two primes prime product bardi bi. So product of two primes, quotient number product of two primes is their product of their quotient numbers. Okay. Ega prime number yaradu rinda quotient number yeno less than one. So since these are prime numbers, quotient number is less than one. So seven minus one six, so five minus one four. So six into four. So it is. 24. So, 5 of 35 is 24 now. Okay. Now, what is next step? Once you get this, divide this. You, I want to express 99 in terms of this. Now. So, we have got quotient number. So, 24 divides 99. Okay. 24 into 4 is 96. It is 3. So, now you can express this 4 raised to 99 as 24 into 4 plus 3, okay, more 35. Then 4 to the power 24 whole raised to 4 into 4 raised to 3 more 35, okay. Now, again 4 raised to 24. Whole rest to 4 is what? Now, 4 is to 24 you have, okay? 4 is to 24. Then, by Euler's theorem, by Euler's theorem, what is that? If A and N are, GCD of A and N are 1, okay? GCD of this is one that is what here a is 4 your n is 35 so obviously it is 1 if this is true then what is the statement says a raised to phi n is congruent to 1 mod n okay now what is your a a is uh, 4 what is phi of n phi of 35 is what 24 4 raised to 24 is congruent to 1 mod 35 okay now 4 raised to 24 in place of that you can put 1 so, 1 raised to 4, 4 raised to 3, more 35. So, this implies 4 raised to 3 is what? 64. 64 more 35. So, when you divide 64 by 35, you will get a remainder as 29 more 35. Okay. Therefore, 4 is to 9, 9 mod 35 is what is equal to 29. This is the answer. Okay. This is how to solve the example. We will see one more. So, what is your next example? Next example is use Euler's theorem to find the unit digit in 3 raised to 100. Okay. Using Euler's theorem, we need to find unit digit in 3 raised to 100. Okay. What is our aim? To find unit digit in 3 raised to 100. So, we have to use Euler's property. Okay. So, first what we have to check now? Whether uh, for that we need to uh, find the unit digit. So, I will consider. 3 and 10. Okay. 100 is multiple of 10. I will consider C 
since 3 and 10 are relatively prime. Why I am choosing 10? Because they asked you to use Euler's theorem. So, to use Euler's theorem, you need A and N. Understood? So, N here we have power as 100. So, 10 is 100 can be expressed as multiple of 10. That is why I am using 2 prime, uh, the number which is prime to 3. So, 10 is obviously prime to 3. So, I am using this. So, N, these are relatively prime. Then, according to Euler's theorem, 3 raised to 5 of 10. 5 of N is congruent to 1 mod N. Yes, this is true. Okay. Now, already we know that what is the torsion function of 10? Torsion function of 10 is 4. Already we have checked this. So, we use that. So, 3 raised to 4 is congruent to 1 mod 10. Okay. So, 3 raised to 4 congruent to 1 mod 10. I want 100. Okay. So, 3 raised to 4 into 25. Okay, 25 into 4 is 100. So, 1 raised to 25 mod 2. So, what it implies? 3 raised to 100 is congruent to 1 mod 10. So, what it implies? The unit digit. Unit digit in 3 raised to 100 is what now? Is this one. Okay, this one. This is how to find the unit digit using Euler's theorem. So, whenever you are going to use Euler's theorem, you must know torsion function. Okay, these two are related to each other. In the next video, I am going to explain about Fermat's little theorem. This is the special case of this Euler's theorem only. Okay, till then, keep practicing all these. These are all important examples. If you have any doubts, please comment in the comment box. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, do subscribe and support. You will get a further notification of my videos. Till then, take care. Thank you.